Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV, where we're coming to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress 2025 in beautiful Cannes, France. I'm Barb Mitchell with JSA, and I am pleased to be joined today by Stefan Aspman, who's the president of Data Center Technologies, and Frank Pellegrino, who's SVP of Sales and Strategy, both for, for Munter's group. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. How's the show going so far? It's a, it's a busy event here this week. Uh, day one? It is. Yeah. Uh, crowded and a lot of good interactions. Um, yeah. We have a coffee stand upstairs, so oh, please join us I will there. be visiting that with, shortly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, Stefan, starting to tell us a little bit about Munter's yeah. and, and just what makes your company so unique. Well, it's a tall order to talk about the uniqueness now, but I think on a serious note, it's been more development in this industry like the last two years compared to the last two decades. So a yes. lot of things have developed, as you know, the last two years. And just product development wise, as an example, we have gone from developing products in the industry, maybe two, three years and roadmaps. And now it has to be like half a year. So yeah. I think for us, that's been a competitive advantage going from seeing customer specific developments in the industry as an exception rather than the standard and for us that's always been a starting point so we co-develop and we do joint r d with the customers all the way from r d out to dedicated flow lanes i think that kind of approach is, is still rather unique in the industry and that has really helped us to grow you, you've had a lot i mean you speak of the industry is definitely growing so i mean i think you're right the last two years have been have seen more advancement in a lot of ways than the last 20. I think that you're absolutely right there. And and, and how companies are keeping up with that uh, is is a challenge, right? But but you've been doing a really great job and you have some, some great success stories to share with us, I think, on that front. You're expanding your portfolio. You, yeah. you have an acquisition to, yeah. to tell us about. You have new partnerships. Sure. A lot to cover. So do you, do you want to start? Yeah, no, I'd love to. I mean, for the last two to three years, we've been kind of on a strategic journey, and the focus has been going from what we came from, which was a niche player in, in data center cooling with a few, you know, proprietary technologies, to transforming to more of a full solutions provider and, a, a you know, on to becoming a, a global leader in data center cooling. And so we've had a couple of paths within that and how we're going to grow that way. We focused a lot on creating a full product portfolio. Uh, the biggest part of that has been the acquisition of Geoclima. It's a uh, chiller company based in Italy. Very similar DNA to what we have in terms of being customer centric and applications focused um, and, and being really focused on having a high performing unit, right? Energy efficient, low power usage, uh, more capacity for a, on a smaller footprint. All those things make that a great technology. We've also looked at uh, expanding our own products uh, organically. We've added a, a CDU line we call the LCX, which is a very uh, scalable and it has you know redundancy built into that system rather than having to have redundant units. So it adds a lot of value for the customers. Uh, and we've partnered up too with a company like Zutacore focusing on you know two-phase uh, direct-to-chip cooling. It pairs really well with some of our core technologies low, very low energy usage. So we're, we're kind of using multiple paths to grow in this fast moving industry. Um, and we're also expanding our footprint a lot. We've got a new factory in Cork, Ireland. We just built a new factory in Virginia that we're expanding again. Uh, we're putting a, a, a very uh, robust testing chamber in there for all sorts of client tests. So, um, and we're now looking to build out into APAC. So there's a lot of exciting things going on. You're busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot happening. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I know that, I mean, with all of these things you've been talking about and the focus that Munters has had, one of the, the core elements, I think, of your organization is you've really been driving innovation mm. across the industry and, and, and you're seen in that way. What are the marketing market trends across the industry that are that are informing these decisions for you, that are that are driving that that sort of mindset of innovation? I think if you go beyond the obvious with the higher densities and all that, that obviously influences everything. Yeah. I think it's a lot about the ship design and how that actually influenced the return of temperatures and, and things like that. And so we try to stay very close to the developers of both, you know, of course, from ship manufacturers all the way out to end customers. That's been key to us. And then just to build on what Frank said, I think that shield water infrastructure has always been around, always been dominating. But now when companies have the opportunity to scale like they do, uh, they 
very many of them, they fall back to a very proven technology that is shield water infrastructure. So before, if you go back just one year ago, monitors didn't have that full offering. We had the indoor units, the cross, but we didn't have the shielders. So you could say we have kind of a half of a solution. So by adding Geoclima to the solution, of course, now we have more well-rounded, well fully-fledged offering. So that's part of it. And, and within that area, I'm happy to go into specifics, but yeah. there's tons of different tech development coming back to the development within the last two years, like specific silicons, challenging GPUs, uh, energy source, nuclear, all of those things are coming into the industries. So I think both in the actual heat rejection, but also in infrastructure in general in the in the yeah. industry is changing a lot right now. Yeah. And so we're sitting here, it's, you know, halfway through the year and we're just starting this show. What, what will you, what are you most looking forward to in the conversations you're going to have throughout the week, but also, you know, for the remainder of this year with the organization, there's so much happening with, with your team. There is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. Now, I, I mean, we're very excited, of course, about the growth we are growing in. I think you mentioned it, Frank. We have our first small footprint in Asia. That's a very exciting opportunity for us. It's kind of untapped potential. Monitors as a group have presence in Asia, but data center technologies as a business area do not until now. So that's a very exciting part. Uh, and now going into the market with, with a much sharper portfolio, I mean, it gives us tons of opportunity and attraction for UK machineries is, is really great. So I think those to bring that technology platform into the US, US from Europe is a very big thing for us, of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to add on to that, Frank. No, it is. I think the biggest thing with innovation, in my mind, is you have to kind of redefine what innovation is now. We used to always just think about, we're going to invent a new a new product or a new technology, but it's it's reinventing the entire way you work. Being much more quick and agile and customer-focused is, is has been a huge yeah. focus now, and um, you have to have the entire organization lined up behind that, yeah. including talking you know it's, it's not even your customer anymore it's your customer's customer we right. didn't have to worry about chips yeah. four years no. ago with air cooling now so you do so you have to really redefine how your whole innovation cycle and and that's a big focus but we're, yeah. we're well positioned because i think customers that have had customer focused r d are going to be in a really good spot with this yeah. you have to be a lot more uh customer driven and to add to that because i think i misinterpreted your question a bit you know it was more towards innovation. And I think Two-Face is, you know, both Cycle, our own proprietary solution, but also Pseudocore collaboration. I think that the temperatures and the rack densities we see now and the ship, I, you know, shield water, yes, it's going to keep dominating the industry, but there will be opportunities for Two-Face because I simply think it's going to be needed. Yeah. So that, that's going to be a deal breaker also in some, from edge applications, but also to more AI factories. Uh, applications. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you both. It's been really a pleasure speaking. I know it's such a busy week and, uh, you know, very much appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day to, to come and talk to us. So, will so yeah, thank yeah, you. No, thank you. Thank and you. thank you to our viewers for tuning in again to JSA TV, where we're coming to you today live from Data Cloud Global Congress. Stay tuned as we continue to bring news stories and innovations from leaders across our industry. Until next time.